All righty. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, uh, March 7th, 2022, here at the Ocean Shores Library. Uh, as chair of the board, I will call this meeting to order at, uh, let's see, it is 2.01. 14.01. Okay. Uh, so next we have roll call. <laughs> let's see, we've uh, got uh, Phyllis Brown, Grant Schaefer, uh, Pam Hulin, John Pike, mm -hmm. um, and uh, our other advising board member, Greg McKay, uh, will not be here today. And then our city council liaison, um, Eric Noble, will not be here. Okay, and then as far as um, uh, yes. yes, residents. We'll start with you, sir. Uh, new resident here, uh, Mark Nikolai. Mark Nikolai? Yep. How do you spell your last name? Uh, N-I-K-O-L-A-I. And do you happen to live on the waterways? I do. Okay. Yep. You need the address? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, this yeah. one. Yep. Okay. And then we have uh, Jim Golden. Mm -hmm. And then, sir? Uh, Dave Cleveland is my name. How do you spell your last name? C-L-E-L-A-N-D. Do you happen to live on the fresh waterways? Yes. All right. And then um, on Zoom, we have Don Williams. And then the other one who's calling in. Bob and Carol Rhodes. Okay, Bob and Carol. Thank you. All right. Okay. So the first. Uh, part, the first business we're going to do is the approval of minutes of our February 7th, 2022 meeting. Uh, so those minutes were sent out by Pam Moulin. And uh, do, first of all, I'd like to ask do any board members have any requests for any changes, additions, deletions of those minutes? I have a question. Yes. On yours and mine date up here, it was not updated to our new dates, and I didn't know if that's Yeah, that's because, true. yeah, it will now. It will be on the next. It will, it will now, which yeah. is? Um, February 7th, 2025. 25? Okay. I wasn't sure when it would. No, we did it that way. We did it on here that way. I'm just going to ask y'all as of that date. Exactly. And I'm going to have. You know, just to make a table. Okay. And then Nani, and I can't remember your last name. Bacon, like what you know? Nani Bacon. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Um, did you have any other uh, questions on that? No. no? Okay. It is 2025, it's three years from 2022. So 23, 24, 25. Okay, gotcha, babes. You're up, Dave. I'm you know what you're signing up for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So with that uh, said, um, all those in favor of accepting the minutes from the February 7th, 2022 meeting um, as written and presented, please say aye. Aye. Do I have any nays? No, okay, the minutes from February 7, 2022 meeting are accepted. Okay. All the business. All right, here comes the fun stuff. Oh, right. yes. Might as well just delve right into it, right? All right, so the old business is the list of priorities. Um, and so what we were talking about at the last meeting was number one, was, um, as you see, I have, I should say just sort of interim, I have changed the name from, it used to say the city needs to do more, and I changed it to the list of priorities, okay? So first off, how do you guys feel about that? Um, because, you know, we can name it, whatever you'd like to name it, list of priorities for the Fresh Waterways Board, whatever. If you guys want to kind of take a pass on that until Greg is here and we all, you know, all of us are here and we can have a little more discussion on time with that. 
and we just leave it as list of priorities for now. And plus, you can have a little bit more time to think after we talk about this. You can think, is that the appropriate name that we want to continue to go forward with? I'm I'm fine with that. I just uh, the only thing I do not want is us to water it down so much, trying to be uber positive. I get it. That it takes the um, urgency out of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I do not want. Good point. Good point. Um, so just, just for me, when we had it named the city needs to do more, it was about, I think it was very, I think it was the correct name and term to use well, it was because it was a the city had been, I mean, let's just be real about it, right? The city was completely disengaged mm -hmm. for, well, we'll say at least 20 years, exactly. right? I mean, you've been out here long, how long? Yeah, 24 uh, years. Uh, okay, so 20-ish years. Um, and so, but this current council, uh, mayor, city administrator have, have uh, put a lot of effort back into the waterways and, uh, you know, not just uh, with talk, but also with money and with their support. What? So I, you know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah, I, I don't want the city to continue to think that, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're not doing it and it's not it's not we don't we don't see that their, their citizens don't see that right um so um i hear you though but list of priorities and then maybe there's something a little bit better that we could call it you know along with the priorities right the reason why i just kind of wanted to spend a couple of minutes on that was is because i'm going to have to go in front of council again and do another presentation and i just want us and council and city employees all to be on the same sheet of music of what it is that we're talking about. So that when we, if it, it is a list of priorities, when they say list of priorities from the Fresh Waterways Advisory Board, everybody knows what that means, right? So. Well, I think you should keep the, the city in the title because again, um, that goes back to, oh, well, this is an address to us, we're off the hook. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. And okay. I think that that's partly the title is a large part of why they finally mm -hmm. had to start doing something mm -hmm. and getting mm -hmm. more involved because it also made it more public uh, to the residents mm -hmm. that they have not been involved. Yeah. So this is why I I I'm like you know political correctness is all fine and good, but let's not overdo it. Mm -hmm. I hear you. That's a very good point. Yeah. Does anybody else have any comments? Um, I think after the discussion is finished and um, have Greg listen to our discussion and then next meeting when Greg is here and we're all here for consensus okay. would be a prudent thing to do. Okay. All right. Grant, how do you feel about that? All right. You're good. John, I'm good. All right, because I know you had uh, you had a yeah, uh, but to your point, you know the way you phrase it, you know, it's still got a little bite to it, mm -hmm. and I think mine was kind of oh please 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 <laughs> no yeah yeah, but, yeah when we were talking I was and that's really kind of what got me thinking is when we had that one on one about the name of it yeah so, no, um, I'm good. Because when we actually start delving in here right now into each one of these issues, um, it is going to take an absolute commitment from the advisory board, um, from the city, and from the residents. I mean, the resident, us as a whole, all of us as residents are the ones who are going to be, um, you know, having to uh, spend taxpayers' money prudently. And um, and again, that's where these priorities, I think, really kind of take place. There are some that will be not as expensive as others, and there are some that will be, huh, I don't know, uh, expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you have that many years of neglect, yes, yes, then yes. it gets expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that then. With as just as far as the name. All right, so on the issues, um, 
there were three very specific items that um, were our number, there were three items on from the last, uh, the initial city needs to do more list um, that have been completed, all right? Mm -hmm. The top two, number one, was separate funding line within storm drain utility fund 438. So if you recall, when we had um, uh, Angela Folkers, the finance city finance director here at the last meeting, she went over that. We actually wrote the fund down. So we know this, it is very specific. And I will tell you that they actually did that um, in in 2021, that wasn't something that was even done in 2022. That was something that once we presented it to the city, and then I actually had a sit down um, with city with a couple of city uh, employees and council members. I think they really understood what the importance of that was, and it actually, I, if I remember correctly, it was done at the second to the last meeting last year. Right, so just so you know. So yeah. that one, what I did was, is, is I just put not applicable because it's done, right? So we're not talking about that anymore. Well, instead of not applicable, just say completed task. Completed, okay. I put it on the not applicable to make it zero points. So oh. I'll, I'll, but I'll do that, I'll say completed task. And also, so for with that, um, Pam, on the notes, can you make sure that it says that we note that on the, on the minutes? That the, the number one is already completed. Yeah, the separate funding line um, has been completed by the city and it's no longer part of, uh, it's no longer will be included in our list. And the second one was weed management for 2022 need more money. Okay. And that was something that, again, city council did in 2021 and they um, fully funded us. So they got us back up. Um, to the uh, to the sixty thousand, right? Which is what we've had in the last few years. Um, but if you recall, this last about eleven thousand dollars, right? So the city from the general fund. Can you hear us? We can't hear you. The mic is not. Ring dot. Not, not working here either. Can you hear us? Maybe down the way and sit back. Because our meeting is out the window. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Wonder if I should hang up and try to dive into again. What's her name? In charge of that, and that's uh, Sarah Logan. Said he quit because he wasn't responsible for that. I think Melanie's there today. You didn't announce her name. I thought I heard that name come up. Mm, maybe yeah. after after the meeting started. I hear your voices. Can you hear me? I hear you. This is Bob and Carol Rhodes. Is this, uh, is are it, you? Is this Don? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, my screen is frozen, and there's a message that says the host has disabled something. So I don't know what's going on. I I just sent her. I sent a text message, but n- nobody's responding. Yeah, we hear nothing. Everything's dead. The only thing we're hearing is you. Good to talk to you, Don. Yeah, great too. I just wish we could talk to the meeting. <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah. I'm, you know, I don't agree that we need a survey by the public. Carol and I got over 755 signatures from the people. They just want action. It's not up to the people to make a decision on the waterways. Yeah, I also noticed that they, think- they, they, they bypassed public comments, didn't they? I didn't. They suddenly, just, they skipped it. No, I said it was supposed to be a three-minute session for that. Well, I, as far this, as I, know, uh, I think they should call instead of kind of a list of priorities, it should be city priorities for, for either the freshwater waste or stormwater waste system. It should, we, they should how be, about even urgent it city needs priorities? It needs to be listed as a long range plan. You take it one step at a time. And I don't think, you know, list of priorities, that is, that's not the proper address. Yeah, any I'm going to sign out and try to get back in again, okay? So if I don't see you again, I hope we get well, back. Maybe we'll, yeah, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll we'll hang up and try calling in again too. Sandy, yes. uh, when you when you brought that up it said planning commission Yes, I know. Oh, okay. I don't know why it does that. I can change it though. Are we back up? I believe so. I don't know if I've lost anyone or not. Looks like you have done this one. Okay. Okay, we're there. I think we're back. Okay. Um, so now that increase in storm drain utility. Um, that was uh, voted on by council, and as you even said, Pam, is this yes? We've all have seen that. Thing. Yeah, it's, we've already right. seen it in progress. Right. So now, just so that we're on the same sheet of music with that, one of the the, the biggest items that that storm drain utility increase it wasn't just for and you know angie spoke about it last week but just as a reminder is is that it isn't just for the fresh waterways the waterways or that holding facility of the storm drain system okay but and that is where we have to get our money from uh, that specific utility but the one of the large items on the increase was to get a employee right for that system all right which would be for the waterways the storm drain and the waterways as well right so but the increase was done <laughs> in the right all right so we can go ahead and take that off of our list right now the things that we had we knew we needed more money for, and this increase would help with that, 
those are still on the list. Okay, it's just that that item is gone. Okay, all right. So this is what I have for. I'm going to just start with the number, just the top three items. Okay, with this latest round of us. Okay, is number one the IAVMP. Mm -hmm. Number two, buoy systems placement replacement. Number three, North End Grand Canal project. Mm -hmm. Those are the three items. Three top. So I'm just going to kind of. The reason I'm just doing three at a time is because it's just going to be easier, I think, to at least start out that way. So IAVMP. If you notice, I have it listed on new business. All right, but for this particular item, right, is what I want to what I want to do with that is I want to say, is there anybody who disagrees with that being at number one or at least very very close to the top? Yeah. Before you go any further, you might want to let Mark know what that is because he's not heard that term before. Oh yeah. Uh, the IAVMP is called the Integrated Aquatic Vegetation Management Plan. Cool. And it's what Thank is you. needed in order to uh, get grants and treatment and things like that for the water and permitting for the water. Steve cool. loves afternoons. Steve loves afternoons. <laughs> <laughs> and out myself. It makes life easier. We're all going. Why are you talking about <laughs> Right on. Uh, so, is there anybody who has any kind of disagreement with it being? Maybe not the number one exactly, but that it is up there the pri top priority. Well, we need to have that done to actually complete other ones. That's right. So That's it right. does well, need to in take order the priority. to start getting other things knocked off. Right. Yes. You know, because so you have to have that That's has right. to be the starting mm -hmm. point to, to achieve these other goals. Um, number two is buoy system placement replacement. That's okay. Really easy. Uh, now, as a reminder, remember we had Deputy Chief uh, Kyle Watson here about five months ago, and the city has purchased 10 new buoys. And um, where we left that, I think he was here for the November meeting, mm -hmm. pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm going to shoot him another email and say, hey, uh, can we have another quick meeting and come up with a plan in order to get moving on this? Um, you guys okay with that? Yeah, we need to we, we got to get these things going. That's an easy one to complete. Yeah. And we need a date. Oh, I didn't even know. I thought I heard something, but I I heard nothing. John, how do you feel about the buoys? Um, John, I'm sure. How do you feel about the buoys? The buoys? I love the buoys. Here's Marshall. Hey, Marshall. Good afternoon. Sorry for my tardiness. Yeah, no worries. But you can go over there if you want at the end over there. But I agree that, you know, as you got to keep kind of tweaking them a little bit to see where we at here. And, uh, well, now with that also, remember back when they did the placement in the previous years, they had their own vote, right? And last I knew that their vote was, they received some money to repair. I don't know where they are with that. But the point being with that is that the backup was the corporation votes. Right. right. And of course, help. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Not physical on that one, Grant, just yeah. driving the vote. Yeah. 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 You good with that? All right. Yeah. All right. He's a great captain. The best. <laughs> he really um, is. Doesn't go in forward too fast or reverse too fast, right, John? <laughs> yeah. We've had that happen before. <laughs> okay. So the third third one is the North and Grand Canal project. Yeah. Now, what I want to do is I want to just give you a quick update as to where we are with that. Okay. Is is because that is a project that started way back, well, some years ago, but in 2019, and Bruce and I were on the charrettes for that to come up with a plan in order to do, to redo and demuck and whatever, build new docks and whatnot of the North End Grand Canal Park, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, what they have, they received all the plans and literally about a month after they received the plans, this is when COVID, initial COVID happened. And then 
they would they you know they weren't doing in person meetings and things like that, right? So last that I had any real meaningful conversation with the city on the North and Grand Canal project was with Nick Bird, the previous director. And um, well, here we are. So what has to happen with the North and Grand Canal project is this. The city, and what I mean by that, it would be with Public Works, has to present that to the city and residents. And there's this whole commenting that has to go on. And Marshall, you probably could give us a little more insight into that process. You probably know about that. Well, I'm fleshing that stuff out kind okay. of as we speak when it comes to you know bigger shoreline projects. Okay. And I suffered some shock myself because I've been working on the um, the Oiha ditch mm. drainage stuff that's yeah. going on up there and where it dumps into the Grand Canal. The last time I was up there, you could have kayaked or canoed right to the picnic tables. Yeah. I had no idea how much of that spilled in. Um, I was shocked. Yeah. So I haven't seen the plans as to as to where the new docks were to be placed and whether there's going to be you know we're, whether we're going to seek permits to clean that end of it mm -hmm. out or not which based on the stuff i'm dealing with right now with ecology and the uh and the uh department of fish and wildlife that's going to be a challenge a challenge well and in 2019 uh they the, the landscape company that was paid to do this process mm -hmm. um they made that very clear they said, you know, because they went down and looked at it and whatnot, and, and then said, okay, well, fine, this is what you guys want to do. Here's your plans, but know that there's going to be serious hurdles to overcome with this, right? So we knew that, but what we had been waiting for since early 2020 was the opportunity where it would get presented to the city council and at council, the residents have their say, just like the Point Ground project, you know, mm -hmm. same concept, right? right? So where we are though is, is that Public Works has those plans. And um, I do know um, that, um, I do know that the Parks Board um, feels that it is a priority as well, right? I, I, I'm not gonna say it's their number one priority or number three, but I do know that they find, know that it is a priority. Uh, I know our city council liaison, Eric Noble, uh, believes it is a high priority as well. And so does uh, Mayor Martin. So um, there, but it is a beast that has to move forward. And again, keeping in line with what I believe what we do as the advisory board is to continue to be the voice of the waterways keep and everything, pushing. all waterways and keep thing, keep that momentum going. Had it not been for COVID, I think we would be in a completely different place with the North End Grand Canal project. Yes. That, um, that particular area is a perfect example of what no maintenance is going to yes. achieve in the waterways. Um, mm -hmm. Nature has reclaimed you know, several hundred feet of that North Grand Canal and it, to the point where it looks like a little creek meandering through what used yeah. to be you know, 50 feet of open waterway. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Scoop and Chuck Park. Yeah, that belongs yeah. to the community club. That's a yeah. disaster too. So the the city's going to have to look long and hard at how they're going to negotiate with Fish and Wildlife and Ecology to maintain these waterways and keep them open as navigational channels. Right. Um, we've lost a significant amount at the at the head in the Grand Canal there. So mm -hmm. exactly. And I haven't had those discussions with Portia. Um, to 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 even get a feel for where she would weigh in or how she would weigh in on that. Okay. Um, all right. So that is those are the top three. Uh, what I'm going to do is is just so that everybody knows where everything else fell. I'm just going to read them out. Okay. In order. So number four, uh, FTE. So uh, an employee on city staff. For the waterways storm drain right for that system right so that's number four number five city council crews with the advisory board and corporation number six lake management restoration study number seven resident education program 
Number eight, shoreline management. Number nine, survey of residents, waterways management. You know, how, what the residents believe we should be doing with the waterways. Uh, next, lake recreation management. And then last, it was last before it was the future projects. If you remember what under those future projects, it, we had a list of things like dealing with the uh, canal flow, the flow fish hook canal. I mean, all of those future projects could all be taken out and put on their own. Um, and maybe we need to do that, you know, in a uh, future meeting. But um, I, I think seriously, you know, for me, we just have, uh, we have a lot to get through before we start working. And some of those other projects are like trying to create a culvert under Ocean Lake Way, you know, not too far from your area to keep the flow of water, right? You know, things like that, right? It was sort of like, hey, you know, perfect world, what can we do, right? And that's what we did with that future projects. Um, so with that said, does anybody have any comments about anything? Maybe you think, we need to revisit some of these and that they should belong somewhere else. Anything like that? Um, I have thought before about combining some of these because okay. uh, Don had mentioned that, you know, this is an extensive list. That's right. Know, so maybe we can condense it a little. But we've taken three of them off of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my thought is, instead of having, uh, you know, we work a little bit here, we work a little bit there, we work a little bit there, instead of spreading everything out so thin, my thought is, why don't we just concentrate on the first three? And when those are completed, then we go to the next three, just to keep focus. Well, let me give you a good example, right? So um, the North and Grand Canal project, we could keep that momentum going. Um, there is, I mean, if waiting until completion of it right. could be three at years, least a start. Years. Okay, right there, but I just but in the meantime, um, do we go well? We, you know, at the city council, the uh, cruising, and, and not, it's not just city council, it was the staff, it was Scott Anderson, the administrator, and John Martin, the mayor, you know, so it was that all encompass, right? We have to be careful, you can't take out, uh, you can't have a quorum with city council, so you can't take out four of them at the same time. And it's probably, John and I talked about this the other day, it's probably better to only do two people at a time, right? Um, especially on, on the corporation boat, right? You know, I mean, don't want to get too many people on there. Right. Um, and, um, but those are things that maybe there's some other things we have lower on the list that we can kind of just continue to bite off, there's, right? There and work on projects. and get them that, um, well, you know, or a project that's going to take a long time to get done. And if we don't start now, <laughs> we won't get there. Exactly. You know, that becomes five years. None of us are even on the board anymore. People go, what, I don't even know what this is. So, okay. um, the client would be like the buoy. He's okay. Yeah, That's he's not okay. in the top three. So, yeah. yeah, I think to Steve's point is you have your priorities. And if we can lodge something or they can lodge something in and fix it or the easy ones. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. shoot, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Um, okay, Phyllis? I'm good with that. Well, a lot of the other ones down below the list all goes with the number one priority, the IAP. And, you know, yeah. Any bottom line that has to be done right for a lot of these other, um, other right, things right, that right. we want to look at. Mm -hmm. need to be considered. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, you brought up that you felt that one of these belong with the planning commission? Um, the education um, one should, I mean, 
currently it is at the planning commission they have material that they hand out when they give permits out for say building docks or um, clearing of lots and stuff the, the education has always been there is whether or not people have read it and accepted it and then we go into the compliance of whether what they've been told to do is actually what they do well so i was looking right here that you had that on the lake management restoration well that again is your um marshall reed's job to make sure that from the permits that are being issued or going out and looking at um complaints by citizens of are they in compliance with our guidelines that we've put out there well on that one that was specific to a study remember we were talking about doing this study like what maple <laughs> valley had done oh, okay. right where they come we get a study done and they come out and they do all kinds of well, they do whatever we want them to do right but uh uh you know ebb and flow soil samples water samples um it's a whole resident education slash comment time and then they present the final product is okay these are all the things that you wanted to know and let's just we'll just use as an example uh there is <laughs> an exorbitant amount of this metal or toxicity level of this in these areas and the the flow of Fisher Canal may be caused by this, and this is how you fix it. And so that was the whole lake management restoration study. And, and talking about what do we do with more shallows and the opening to Lake Menard. So what you do is you point out all the issues that you want to have studied. The company comes in and does that, tick mark each one of those things, and then presents us with probably something like that dramatic document that Grant gave to me <laughs> today. Um, you know, and then of course we read it and we move forward, right? But one of the things that's important with that, because I know that it's important to all of us, is the survey of residents, right? And that lake management study can do that. And it isn't us doing the um the uh, resident survey it's a company that comes in and they hold town hall type things and and you know give an education and then ask questions and i'll do they you know that's what they do right so it's this professional service coming in and doing it i know that that all costs money but for me i sit here and think well if if everybody is serious right the advisory board, the council, the uh, public works, the residents, if everybody is serious about what is in the best interest uh, for these waterways and the residents to use them, then I think you, you, you have to have somebody come in and do an all-inclusive study of every single bit of it, right? Which would also include the culverts, the ditches, you know, all of that. What's wrong with the ebb and flow here and all of that? You know, some people, such as Grant, have brought up, you know, about the weir, right? You know, the overflow. And is there a way that that could maybe be, uh, you know, can we uh, use, use, use it? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, but so we can capture more water. Can it be raised and, you know, right. things like that, right? Which would cause, I mean, which would, you know, have to have a whole different issue of the study, right? Corps of Engineers and all that kind of thing. Right. So, but my point is, is that we even have residents who bring those things up. And I think that's really the only way to move forward is that you, you got to put money into figuring out what is going on with the system. What do we as residents want to see for the system? And then what is the way forward, right? And, you know, not only just what is a priority, but when it comes to financial part of it, what is just, there is no way, let's just say, you know, that they were to say, if you want to do this uh, flow project within Fisher Canal, it would cost a million dollars because you got to get in and dredge it, you got to do this, you got to do that. I'm just making it up, right? But 
the point is, is you have these professional people, right? Uh, environmental scientists, right? And ecologists and things like that who know what they're doing and can come in and say, like what Marshall just said, you know, about getting a permit. You might have them come in and say, there's no way you would get a permit, you know, to do something like that. So here's some alternates. <laughs> Instead of us just sitting here spinning wheels. Well, and also say it will cost money mm -hmm. to hire someone to do that. The, the residents got to understand, the citizens, and even we have to understand it's going to cost money no matter which way you look at it, whether you hire somebody to do it and get more suggestions than you, if you have a city employee sit there and do it, mm -hmm. which takes them away from other projects that need to be done too. Mm -hmm. It's That's going to cost way. money yeah. no matter which way you look at it. Yeah. It's just who you're paying. Yes. So what I wanted to do with this is I mean we probably could go one by one by one by one and talk about this you know ad nauseum you know but at the end of the day what I wanted to do was talk about it a little bit I can forward this to you so you can see what we did last time yeah. what we have this time and not only that but we also have one less advisory board member because we had Joe Kubitschek and then of course <clears throat> I used Fresh Waterways Corporation Bruce had input. Right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do Bruce this time just because I know that he's got you know a lot going on. But two, we have three corporation members, three trustees mm -hmm. that are on the corporation who could give the corporation input, right? Um, so the points are going to look different, right? Up here we got 32, and over here we have four. <laughs> just, just so that when you're looking at that, you go, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, right? So how do you guys feel about that, right? Because I don't want to sit here and waste all the entire time talking about just one topic. Um, I like that idea because uh, I kind of wanted to see, mm -hmm. you know, I have the original, then I have what I've sent. I couldn't find that one. Oh, no, I have I just... No, original. Oh, the original one. Yeah, okay, I, yeah sorry. I don't know where I put that. I will, my files yeah. So what I can do is, is I can send... The original one that we did, this one right here, the original one we sat down and did what, like last June, July, right? I'll send that, I'll send this, and you guys can just veg on it for a while, think about it, go out and go boating, think about mm -hmm. it, right? Have beautiful days to go boating. And uh, I don't know, and talk to your friends, your neighbors and all that good stuff and see what people think about it. And then we can, um, you know, talk about uh, the rest of the projects. Do you guys agree with those top three though? The IABMP, the buoys, the North and Grand Canal. If you do, then that is what I will spend my time on the next, between now and the next meeting, talking with council uh, members or the mayor, city administrator, public works some more, and the uh, chief and deputy chief of police. That's where I'll spend my time uh, this next month, if you guys agree with that. Well, buoys need to get out there. Yeah. Boats are out already. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean it's nice weather. It's been calm. They're out. Okay. Grant, you good? Good. Sam, John. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Then that's what we'll do. All right. And this one I will send as soon as I get back home, even though it's Maria's birthday. But uh, I will, as soon as I get back home, I'll uh, I'll send this to you guys. Okay. So there you go. That's our old business list of priorities. New business. Steve, Marshall. Can I have a minute? Yeah. I don't think you did public comment. No, that's uh, we got to go there. Last. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, 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 no worries. And then, so Marshall, you're walking at the right time. Tree removal of Fisher Canal. Perfect. Yeah, so I, um, the, the update on that is I met with John uh, Wagner and the street department who's done the coordination of tree removal. Uh, with um, Mr. Judd, and he was going to make contact with him and get a schedule together. We're hoping to have him in there and get the trees laid down and, and dealt with before the 15th because our access point on, uh, on Falls and Clyde is going to expire right around the 15th. Okay. Um, we did go down and look at the tree farthest north up into fish hook the mm -hmm. one 
it almost looks to me like that one might be able to just be knocked down or pulled down without accessing it from the shoreline. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how buried the tip is in the sand or whatever, but that's something that a person could uh, feel out. I'll include that in the in a letter to uh, Fish and Wildlife. I'll try to get that out to Portia this week so that she knows we're ready to move on it. Um, we'd like to have that done before the 15th uh, because our, like I said, our access point goes on the market. Uh, the, the house is going up for sale, so. Oh, she didn't do it that fast. Well, it goes on the market on the 15th. Oh, okay. and, and if they have, I mean, we don't want to be in there messing around and, and, right. and mess with their sales potentials or whatever. We'd like to get in and get out. So, so is, is that what you mean by the access off? To the 15th. To the to the uh, to the trees that are slated for removal right around 950 Falls of Clyde. There's I, I think there was like a half a dozen in there that we had identified. And uh, and yeah, we, we would like to have those on the ground by the 15th of uh, of March. And that isn't because of any permits, it's because of the residents. It's because of the residents, yeah, okay, for, because you. of our okay, access. Yep, yep, yep. And she's okay. got a big old huge pontoon. Okay. No, I, I they, they, they were extremely gracious yeah. in, in allowing us access and you know, pretty much do whatever you need to do to get them down. And, okay, uh, that's great. Okay. So, so do you need as soon as the, from me? We don't. Um, okay. As soon as John uh, makes contact with Nathan, he'll probably contact you and okay. really take a look at it. Um, I walked it with John on, on either Thursday or Friday. And so he knows what needs to be done and we'll coordinate um, use of the boats through you and the corporation. So, and Grant. And Grant, and Grant. yeah. But I just, as a single point of contact, yes, we'll, absolutely. we'll, we'll work That's with fine. you and then yeah. you can make contact yeah, with right. Right. Yeah. Let know yeah. the and that kind of stuff. So you, you worked with them last time and they had a, a group of guys, uh, it's my understanding that that basically provided the, the bulk of the labor and then you were just running the boats, is that a correct? I was just running the boat. Okay, so that's kind of what I conveyed to John, what we would, we would like to have the same program that occurred last time occur this time. Uh, with the exception of um, John will provide a crew for chipping over at your house. Um, so can I clarify party? that for you? Sure. Uh, the support that we've given um, Nathan, Judd, uh -huh. service, it's been the Freshwater Ways Corporation okay. members who okay. have done that. And currently, you might get two, Grant drives the boat, uh -huh. two, um maybe three members so okay. additional manpower is needed yeah and that's what we wanted uh nathan to include in his cost the additional two or three guys that he had last time to provide you know the bulk of the muscle after he's got the trees down to move around yeah he's know. usually only bought just one other person. just one other guy okay yeah and they don't help unload they don't help him what unload oh okay but that was the point that I have been making this whole time was is that that work and what we talked about. Yeah, yeah. Is, I've been made that point to the city is is that the work has to come from Nathan, right? We are not yes. capable because yeah. the people who would do it, you see, sit around the table. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, we can't do it. So. We help, we provide the vehicle that Nathan ties on to, that he does brings his pulleys, mm -hmm. although I don't know if he's gonna be able to do that different setup. I yeah. have to look at yeah. it to see how he's gonna get those those larger trees that have to come out, mm -hmm. out of the water, because he would hook on to a tree right. and use his pulley, and then we would pull them up. Usually that would be my Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a small backhoe that, that we would use it for. Okay. Yeah, I think I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you yeah. want to use my side yard this time, that you're. Well, actually, where the trees are is about four lots down from his house. Okay. When so I was right out there, when closer. we were out there, we were looking yeah. at his backyard. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, used be ranch used. before yeah. too. You know, so typically we um, for fish hooking in that area, it's either mm -hmm. ranch or mine. Yeah, my second year. That other tree though that's down is, you know, obviously your your lot is closer. That's the one that's actually whichever works down. because usually Nathan will um, 
pulley up in that one tree right on mine and to come up the the side the side there we pull it up that little thing mm -hmm. and i have my garden fence but i purposely left room mm -hmm. so the vehicle can get in there and even the chipper can get back there if it has to okay from the city she's got a nice new dog I do. Didn't you notice that? No, I, I don't know why. I must have been spacing as I was. Were you spacing? I must have been. Not a really know. nice new dog. <laughs> Do a lot of maintenance on it. Yeah, it definitely requires maintenance. <laughs> yeah, just a little. So as, as soon as I get a date, I uh, yes, let me know. I'll pass that on, and, yeah, and we'll get that ball rolling. Grant, do you have anything going on between that you'll be out of town between now and the next two weeks? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, all right. As soon as I hear from Marshall, I'll let you know. Yep. I'll just let everybody know. I'm right. Not just track. send us a message. Okay. <laughs> so anything else on the tree removal, Marshall? No. no? Pretty Perfect. much covers it. Okay. All righty. So here we go. IADMP, the Integrated Aquatic Vegetation Management Plan. All right. So I did uh, verify with um, Eric Noble, our city council member, that the IADMP is funded. Remember, there was a bit of a question, right? And it is funded. What it is, is, is that it's still with Public Works. So oh, yeah, they still need when, what has to happen is, if you remember, we went through the whole process <coughs> of the RFI for the aquatic weed treatment. Remember, we did all that? Well, that's what has to happen for the IAD and P. So Public Works has to forward or has to create an RFI, which we'll work with them to do that, request for information. That then gets sent out requesting for a bid, right? Then the bids come back. Now I know when it was the aquatic weed treatment is as we, Nick Bird sent the bids to, to me and then passed them out to all of you and we all sat down and talked about it and then we recommended <coughs> to the city. So when the when that time comes, I'll ask the city, hey, can we do that again so that we can advise the city on who we think would be the best uh, company to do the IABMP. Ultimately, it is for council to decide who wins the contract and then execute it. Okay. So just as a heads up, Marshall, because you'll see an email come from me. Uh, I was waiting for after this meeting, but is is that right now it is with uh, Public Works, and Eric was going to talk with Robert, okay, to see uh, what what needed to be done in order to get it moved. We want to get a request for proposal out. Yeah, that's what has to happen. Okay, because the money's there. So now the the do, do the request for proposal, get the bids. That whole process. Is right. there a time frame that you guys targeted last time or, or well, something? That you... Seeing that this hasn't been done in probably a dozen years, okay. uh, the sooner the better. Because what we want to make sure is, is if we can for this weed treatment, because we can already see parrot feather coming back. And since parrot feather is an invasive species, mm -hmm. we can request grants to treat that. Whereas that was one of the things that took us way over budget on the weed treatment last year was specifically the paraffin hmm. because it is a specific treatment that has to be done and it has to be done two different occasions, which means he's schlepping his stuff all out here two different times um, and then do the treatment. So that was almost $7,000 that we weren't expecting. Not to say we would guaranteed get a get a grant for it, but at least grants are available. Right now, we can't even request a grant because we do not have this IAVMP in place. Did y'all get that? Got it. Okay. <laughs> it's in the vault. <laughs> so uh, again, I just uh, I wanted we, this. You'll see this is uh, we'll move it into old business. I'll move it to old business, and it stays there. Just like what I did with the other projects until it's done, right? And then that will be what I am working closely with council members um, and public works to get that. Anybody have any comments? That's Robert. 
Robert Lund is the city engineer. Oh. Yeah. And so I think is Robert uh, pseudo public works director. He's, he's functioning in some capacities right. as the public works director, right? Right. right. Yeah. That's so like the trees and all that, I wasn't going to bother Robert with that, right? Because yeah, I, I know that Marshall does, you know, being the planning uh, for the city city planner, that that's going to be more of his alley than me dealing with the city engineer <laughs> on. So, um, but the IAVMP, Eric. Noble specifically used his name. So that's who I'm going to go to. And I'll carbon copy you on that, Marshall, okay. so that, that way you're at least in the loop. Grant, do you have anything on IAVMP? No. Pam? John? I'm good. Okay, beautiful. All right, so now we're going to do our public comment. All right, so what I ask is, is that we limit it to please limit your comments to three minutes. So that way we just, you know, can. Uh, give everybody uh, an opportunity to speak. All right, so first we have, uh, I'm sorry, Marshall. Be before you get going on yeah, that, can sorry. I throw one more update in there that, yeah. that we haven't talked about yet? And that is the Shoreline Master Program was due to be updated in uh, 2022. It's due uh, by the beginning of 23. And currently I'm working with Sarah Bisson. We have a $16,000 grant that um, the Department of Ecology puts out to hire a consultant to help us update the, uh, the shoreline master program that's in process and hopefully by the end of the week we'll have that grant application in and i'm working with one of the shoreline administrators at ecology she says we're we've all but you know got guaranteed that if we fill out the paperwork correctly and we've got several things in our smp that need updating so it's a requirement we have the needs and we have grant funding that looks like it's going to be made available to us so that's just one thing that um as we move through some of these updates and shoreline uh, processes, uh, we'll we'll have that done this year as well. So, what yeah. was the date that needs to be done by? Well, it needs the the application needs to be turned in by the end of this month. Oh, for a grant, yeah. Right. And it it preloads a lot of the information. There are a few other things that that have to be input, and the shoreline administrator, uh, Tess Vanden from the Department of Ecology, has extended her. Uh, desire to help us get through that process so we can get the update done. He doesn't want to see us miss, miss that opportunity. So we'll be working on that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Marshall. All right. So the first will be Mark. I'm too new here. So I'm just uh, want to hear what you guys all had to say and what this committee is all about. So I'm gotcha. good to go. So all far, right. looks good. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. All right. And uh, so Mr. Golden. Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Robert Lund, I know he's not here, and Marshall Reed for all their hard work. And it's nice to have people that work for the City of Ocean Shores that can step into these positions and uh, pretty much not slip and fall. So I think yeah. it's, it's very good that we've got these kind of people working here. So my hat's off to them. That's all I really have to say. All right, thank you, sir. All right, and Dave? Uh, like Mark, I'm pretty new to the community and uh, I'm here just to learn. Uh, got cold, of course, into it by some neighbors of mine that are online. Mm. So <laughs> I'm here, Bob and Carol. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So I'm here just to learn and uh, observe and, and hopefully get more integrated and involved. Good. Did you come out and help us with that cleanup of the. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I knew I saw uh, Bass Bridge. Yeah. 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 I have overdone it a little bit. I, <laughs> you, were out there, <laughs> you were out there on the shoreline. Yeah. 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 I, I, I was going to say, when I saw your face, I thought. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Because you were only here part time at that time. Yes, ma'am. We're just. Uh, yeah. Just before we got here. Yeah. 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 Just retired from the Navy in December, and now I'm out here full time. And we just got back from a cruise in Mexico this morning. So, oh, I'm wow, right wow. Bed, and I believe you're my neighbor. Yeah, yeah. So my wife nice. says I got to meet the new neighbor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll chat. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Gotcha. All right, and Nani. Where would you guys be working on first here for your first water theme? Is it going to be closer to where the um, where the marina is, or are you going to be going from the bottom section over here to work on? Um, the reason why I'm asking is that you know this IGA area, somebody came and sprayed in there, and it's all brown. 
but then I started to see some green things coming up. Uh, so I was just wondering, what, what are you guys you're, you're talking about the treatment? Yes. Yeah. So what we have to do is, is the treatment will, the process will start by having Northwest Aquatic Ecosystems, Doug Dorling, I think you were here for his presentation. Um, and what he will do is come out in May and he does uh, uses his sonar to go throughout the whole waterway system to figure out where weeds are already present, the height of the weeds, all those kinds of things. Then he provides us with a recommendation of, and not, not just uh, where, where they are and the height, but also the type, right? And then provides us a recommendation and say, I think this is what you should do because these are the worst areas. So right now we have no idea what, what we're gonna be doing. But uh, that will probably be, I would say, maybe at uh, probably at our June meeting when we will probably have that those graphs in hand and we can figure out the way forward. Okay. Thank you. Were you and you were talking about the treatment, or were you talking about the mechanical harvesting? Both. Okay. So the mechanical harvesting, um, we're going to do. Um, what we what we need to try to do is figure out where we can go that we're not going to get any of the runoff from the uh, treatment, right? Because we want to get an area that we can figure out without any kind of herbicides affecting this overall um, experiment, right? And so one of the things that we saw was is that um, we did not treat the south end of the Grand Canal, meaning from the Point Brown Bridge, the Bell Canal entrance. We did not, that is where we had it stopped. However, that uh, the flow of the Grand Canal brought that herbicide down probably about another oh, mile on the Grand Canal or so because we saw some of those weeds, not fully, not completely uh, gone like they were in the north part, but the south part, there definitely was an effect. So when we do the mechanical harvesting, we don't want any herbicides anywhere around it. So we can figure out what, how, how effective it is. Okay, does that answer your question? Yes. Thank Perfect, you. thank you. Okay, um, Don Williams. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Just listening. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All righty. Um, Bob and Carol. Yeah, thanks. Um, I wanted to ask a question about the status of the police boat. Because the police boat in the past was always used for buoy placement. And I was wondering if they have got the boat repaired or is it under process or what's the status there? That's the first question. The second question is, what is going to be the value of a resident survey? Carol and I spent a lot of time talking to people, getting petitions, talking about the situation with the waterways, and all they want is action. It's not up to the people to decide what is to be done. It's up to the specialists, the people who know what's going on. So the residents are not going to be of any value. It's going to be a stall time. It's going to cost money. It's wasted. We've already got enough information to show that they want action. So that's up to us to make the action happen. So that's just one of my comments. Another one is, where is, is this volunteer manpower going to come for this season since they were unable to do all the shoreline cleanup last year? How is it going to be any different this year? Okay, so do you want me to respond to those three things? Oh, I'd like to know if they know what about the police boat status, though. Okay, so the police boat, I don't know. I'm not the police, so I don't know what they have. I know that they received um, money from the city uh, council to do some repairs to it, but I have not talked to the chief or the deputy chief about the repairs of their boat and 
to be very frank, I really wasn't uh, going to ask them. I mean, that's that's for the, they have a fully staffed police department and they can figure that out. I have enough on my plate to figure out uh, besides what's going on with the police boat. Um, but why is it why is it the duty of the corporation with your support to do buoy placement when that's always been a function of the police? Well, we are have we have a backup plan for the Fresh Waterways Corporation to assist um, if needed. So. But that's what we we've already decided, and uh, we've already the, I've already talked with the Fresh Waterways Corporation, um, and they're willing to do that. And if we can work hand in hand in order to get the buoys placed, then that's what we'll do. So that is the boat question, and then the uh, other question was about volunteers. What was your first thing? My question is, we didn't have enough manpower before, so without city help and city workers available, how do you think the manpower is going to get any better than it was in the past? Well, as far as before, uh, we do know that there was maybe not, that there was not much assistance that we were receiving. Um, however, the city is providing uh, a service. We're getting into Fish Hook Canal. Um, and were, were, were you online to hear what Marshall Reed from Public Works talked about with the uh, Fish Hook Canal tree removal? Yes, I did, but no, nothing's been mentioned about the Bass Canal and there are trees down there as well. Well, there's trees down in the Bass Canal? Yes, they have been for a couple of years. I'll get in my boat and I'll go look. I the was down out. there the other day on the bridge looking around. It's, you cannot see it from the bridge. As can be, you're not going to bring a Washington State ferry through there, but it is what it is. Well, I'll get in the boat and I'll go over there and uh, we'll look at that. Um, but right now what we're doing is we're doing what we can do is, um, you know, to be very frank, as far as the volunteers, um, we've gone out and we've asked, you know that, that we've gone out and we have asked for volunteers. And um, last or, yeah, last year um, in early 2021, we were very successful. As a matter of fact, the gentleman right here, Dave, uh, was out there. Everybody sitting around this table, the Fresh Waterways Advisory Board members were out there. <clears throat> so um, we will continue to do what we can do with the volunteers that we get and also work. Well, I appreciate support. I appreciate that, Steve, but we still have two big trees down in the south end of the Duck of Duck Lake on the west side that have been there all year. Those haven't been addressed either. Okay. All right. So, do you got you have anything else? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at that. Well, my wait just a second. Grant has something to say on the uh, police boat. I think on the uh, sales pitch for the boat. I don't think in the description this it's designed to set buoys and moorings in that. It's sort of beyond its design. And whenever you operate beyond the design of the boat, uh, you're going to tear it up. And so you're going to see a replacement of that, uh, of the problems we've had with the police boat if you start using it for muscling uh, moorings and buoys and all that around. And it would behoove me that the city uh, lean a little more heavily on the corporation's uh, flat bottom barge and see about putting a tablet on it and you do a heck of a lot easier. Okay, thanks Grant. Carol, did you have something? Well, my question has always been, the city was developed. The city put in all the road systems around town. 
They maintain them. They don't ask the citizens if there's a chuck hole in a road, should we fix the chuck hole? They just maintain the road system. Okay, the city developed the entire waterway system and they've done nothing to maintain it. Why don't we have a group that maintains the waterways? A city, a city department or something, maybe it's part of the roads, but why do you have to survey people to find out if something needs to be fixed? So that is something that we're working on. And, uh, you know, in order to get that, uh, we have to, uh, you know, there has to be a starting point. And that starting point is um, what um, we all have worked towards was trying to get the funding so that the city could hire um, a person to manage the storm drain utility system, including the fresh waterways. So when that person is hired, uh, I'm sure that there will probably be a lot of um, yeah, there'll be there'll be a lot of things to do for that person and to figure out where are they going to get the help. Um, you know, if you, uh, I don't know if you guys were, you know, had listened to the um, presentation that uh, John Wagner did um, and Marshall Reed did as well. They, they did them together, a public works, and they were talking about what public works is responsible for. Uh, they gave all kinds of stats of what um, they had completed, uh, talked about how many employees they have and um, how vast the system is, uh, or the, the, the peninsula, you know, the city of Ocean Shores. And the when was that city, meeting, Steve? Um, I can find that. Um, I know that it is on, um, uh, they recorded it. It's on YouTube or something like that, but I'll find it and I'll send that to you. It's one of those mayor chats that was done about maybe a month ago. Yeah, three weeks ago. And three weeks ago. I think it was three weeks. Ago. Yeah, about three weeks ago. I'll send that to you guys because actually I kind of feel bad because I knew it was there and I thought, oh, I probably should send this to Bob and Carol so you guys could listen to it. Um, and I'll send that to you. I, I found it very, very informative myself. I, I didn't quite realize um, everything that John Wagner has under his belt and what he actually accomplishes with the few amount of people that he has. It's very remarkable in my opinion. But um, the waterways, I agree. And you guys hear, not just me, but all of the advisory board members talk about this, is, is that, you know, yes, for many, many years, the city was hands off. And I guess I have to say it again. I said it very pointedly last summer, but I'll say it again. As I say to all of these, all of the residents that have lived here for 15, 20, 25 years, I have to say, why did you guys allow it? That's what I have to say. So here I am now in 2022, trying to figure out how to get something funded that has never been adequately funded ever. Um, and now we're trying to get the funding yet we have a lot of residents who have issues with raising the utility tax. And I understand that, but the utility tax- Well, we don't get to, we don't get to say anything when they raise money to, you know, fix roads and things. We don't get to yeah. ask, they just bill us and, you know, so why, anyway, I don't know. And that, but I'm trying to reply is, is that what we're paying really and truly, it, it's gonna have to get increased if we're going to do much more work in this entire system, all right? Again, I wanna say it again, it's not just the fresh water waves. It is the storm drain utility. It's the ditches, right. it's the culverts, it's the waterway. Right. It's all of that, that, that crazy Oya ditch that should have never exactly. ever gotten in the condition in which it is today, right? But so exactly. for residents that have been out here for two decades and longer, why? why? Why did you let the city get away with that? So again, here we are, 2022, trying to create something that didn't exist. 
And I am very appreciative of the current um, uh, public, works, uh, public works employees, John and Marshall, and also the city council members that uh, we have who are trying to help get to at least a baseline, because I don't even think we're really even at a baseline yet. All we're going to do is, is get enough money so that we can get an employee. That's it. We don't, we're not going to, that's, that fund is not going to be enough money to go and do any huge project. There just isn't going to be enough money to do that. So if we, as no, we um, need to look at this, money's going to have to be brought in probably from the general fund to maybe do a study or something. And then with that is going to have to look at, well, how much does this utility really need to be raised in order to do a project or two or three? And then how much is it going to cost in order to continue that maintenance and repair that these waterways has to need, all right? So when you go 60 years with doing nothing, and then all of a sudden we're trying to do something, it's gonna cost money. And it's also going to cost um, a lot of time and effort on um, the volunteers who sit at the advisory board and sit on the corporation and also the residents who uh, thankfully uh, come out and help the corporation clean, delim, do whatever, right? So um, we're working towards that is what I have to say. Yes, and I, I'm very thankful that we've got Marshall and John Wagner, people like that who really do want to help the city. And probably, Steve, this went on a long time because these older men that are still trying to work on our waterways, waterways were quite a lot younger 20 years ago and yeah. didn't mind going out there and spending day after day. Because you yourself have said people show up and go out of work a day and they never show up again because it's darn hard work. Yes. Completely. We want to thank you so much for all your hard work. And believe me, I believe that the fact that we took out the time to go get the petition signed by people on the waterways and away from the waterways, they want action. That was the driving force, I believe, to get some of this action that's taking place right now. And I thank you for all your hard work and don't don't give up on it because we're going to get this done. But we need a long range plan. Your priorities have to be part of a long range plan. Take it one step at a time. That's exactly what we're working on. I will say that I don't know if you guys go to council meetings and give your comment, but I can tell you, ultimately, every all we do is advise council, the mayor and public works. Those are the people that we advise. Um, we're voice for the fresh waterways. And we advise them on what we believe are the priorities and what should be done for the maintenance and repair. But who is going to make these decisions is going to be those people that we all voted in, right? Whether you voted for them or not, I don't care. But it's those people who are sitting there at city council who are going to make that ultimate decision, right? So coming and saying, uh, you know, talking to the Fresh Waterways Advisory Board it does not fall on deaf ears. Uh, we all hear what everyone has to say, but ultimately all we can do is advise. If you want and you really want to get some action, then a lot of that needs to be talked to to your council members, either at council me meetings or call them and do a one-on-one -on -one with them and say, look, <clears throat> I come to the Fresh Waterways Advisory Board meeting now, you know, seven, eight months religiously every month, and this is what I think we need to do. These people are trying to do X, Y, Z, and, you know, at some point, they're not going to be able to do much of anything because there's not enough money. Right. You might be a person who thinks that your utility is high enough and you don't want to see that that storm drain, that particular utility fee go up. That's fine. And you can say that to your council member as well. But if you do that, you also have to realize that all that that really truly does is to just do an immediate stop all of anything that the advisory board wants to do. No money, no action. Plain and simple. Right. Okay, so we're done with that. What we're going to do is do good of the order, and we'll start with John. I'm good. Okay, and then Pam. 
Um, I have a question. When did we first get a mayor? It has not been that long. Uh, John I Martin. believe John is the third mayor, right? The new one we have now, Martin. John Martin. He's the third one, isn't he? Well, we've had several. We, 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 I mean, as far as having an actual mayor, we, when did that start? We've had city managers. We've had city managers, but I need mean a mayor. Mm -hmm. Then we went to a strong mayor. Okay, all right, but what is, what is that? What I'm trying to say is, is that, yeah, the city was incorporated in what, 63? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it was incorporated, but it's always been pretty well run by a city manager. Okay. Correct? So in a sense, people are, are, are upset and this and that, and nothing gets done here, nothing gets done there, and things seem a little chaotic. It's because we're still a very young city, okay? And we're still working out the kinks, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know? And, and we're still learning how to work with each other, mm -hmm. okay? And um, there seems to be a lot of finger pointing going on. Um, this one's not doing this, and that section's not doing that, and why does this one have to cover that one, and blah, 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 okay? So, so my basic comment is, is we're still a city learning to grow, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. And so we're still a city that is trying to work as a whole unit. And I see that we're trying to do that as a city and that's kind of unusual if you think about it. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a little patience in that respect and understand that that uh, everything is in process mm -hmm. and that the sooner we can, the different um, departments can, can learn to overlap a little with each other and work together the quicker things will get done and the smoother it will go. So I don't see where the finger pointing is, a, is uh, helpful. Okay. Got it. That's it. Yeah. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, just sort of to respond to that. Uh, in the early days, there was a lot of city administrators and city personnel that that didn't see personality wise with the corporation and so they were always head knocking each other and that's what why this committee has come about to smooth things out and the uh with people like yourself uh we've got like several hundred percent better now in cooperation with the city and so we've come a long way, but we still have a little ways to go. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. All right, anything else? Oh, okay. Phyllis. All right, I have just a couple here. Is this, I had a meeting, one-on-one -on -one meeting with the Parks Board Chair, Kristen Hartman, uh, last Thursday it was. And um, that's why I know that the North End Grand Canal project is a priority for them, right? But I don't know exactly where it falls. The, one of the things that she was had in mind was, a, <coughs> and we talked about this, it's actually part of the future projects, right? Is a place where we could put in a disabled kayak launch, mm -hmm. right? And I, I do know that that is a priority for them as well, right? So just kind of put that in the back of your mind. And again, while you're out and about boating or driving around and looking at all the different parks on the waterways that we have, if you think that there you have a good idea of where it should be or you know something like that, then bring it up. You can email me, text me, or just I'll bring it up because I'm actually gonna make that as part of an agenda item for the next meeting. Um, because uh, she wants to get rolling on that. And um, I think that that's where we can, both boards can come together and uh, make some progress as well. All right. 
And uh, we also had a good little conversation about, you know, how can the Parks Board and the Fresh Waterways Advisory Board work together mm -hmm. on um, any park that obviously hits the water, right? I mean, North Bay Park, if there may be a dock has to be replaced or repair of a dock or something like that. And so just so you know that she and I, we, we had an initial meeting and we'll probably have <laughs> more of those to be talking about that in the future is to really start getting into the nitty gritty of those. Again, some of those are part of our future projects. So if both boards can come together and make a case to council on what we need, then uh, that could be helpful as well. Okay. Um, that's all I have. That's all I have. Okay, so let's see. It is 327, and I adjourn this meeting. Next meeting will be held April 4th, 2022, 2 p.m. here at the Ocean Shores Library.